It was a fantastic uh, show. How's that? And uh, we thought we'd take it one step further and talk to Tony Gregg, uh, an Australian now, obviously, uh, but a former POM who is also being portrayed in How's That, just to find out what he thought about it. Uh, because it has been, uh, I think, the topic of many persons' conversation, not just the, uh, the show itself, but uh, what Chappelle had to say on the program last night. Of course, South African as well, Tony Gregg. Welcome to you, Tony. Great to have you. Thank you very much. How are you guys? We're good. Uh, what did you think of it? Oh, firstly, I presume you watched it. What did you think <laughs> of it? And how did you think you were portrayed so far? Well, yeah, I watched. I've actually watched it three times because okay. my family wanted to watch it and we had an advanced copy and what have you. Um, look, these people need license, don't they, to make these shows. Yeah. Um, and they've clearly taken it <laughs> uh, in quite big chunks. Uh, I, I agree with chaps. Um, you know, there, there are certainly uh, a few scenes that... Uh, um, surprised me that I certainly can't remember. Um, and uh, as such, you know, I, you, know you, you, from from a personal point of view, you, you, that sort of upsets you a little bit. But uh, I, don't, I don't think you can make a show that rated as well as this one did without having, uh, you know, without doing a few of those things. And so, you know, I sort of accept that. And hopefully, you know, at some stage, uh, guys like you and myself and others will get around to writing a book. Uh, and, um, and and telling everyone exactly what happened. That said, Tony, I think of all the cricketers that uh, were portrayed by actors, uh, you fared the best. Your bloke seems to be a pretty good actor. He's got a pretty good uh, accent, and uh, there are some physical resemblances. Oh well, I'm I'm, I'm glad you said that. I, I I would have preferred Brad Pitt, but uh, <laughs> that wasn't to be. Uh, no, uh, look, I think he did a very good job. I you know I I'd, I'd, I'd like to have seen him uh, or seen our uh, our characters develop, develop developed a little bit more. I mean, obviously they did a great job on Kerry so far. I mean, you know, there there are aspects of what they did. I've, I've never seen Kerry throw anything, so um, you know I, that was you know mm. that, that was obviously a bit of drama for the for the effect of the show. Um, you know, hopefully in the second half we're going to see you know a little bit of the charm of Packer um, and um, you know other aspects, uh, the generosity, um, you know, the astuteness of the man. Uh, so, you know, hopefully that's still to come because, you know, he, he, he really wasn't just a one-dimensional one nasty, so can to speak. I, can I ask uh, you... I, I'm very happy with what with the way they portrayed me so far. They, they at least they put a tie on my... It made me look relatively smart, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I thought he did a good job. Can you take us back to that time, though? Uh, you were still a uh, relatively... Young man, you're captain of uh, England. You had a powerful position in sport, and uh, in some ways, you were, in the short term at least, uh, one of the biggest losers. You must have agonised uh, at various stages as to whether you had done the right thing. Yeah, I did. There's, uh, there's no doubt that. I mean, look, there, there was a, there was a point, a very significant point in uh, time in my life where. You know, you, and you saw that scene there with me sitting uh, opposite uh, Kerry Packer with mm. Bruce Francis and trying to negotiate a deal for the rest of my life. I mean, I was 31 years of age, and, um, you know, we had to find something else to do because mm. in those days you weren't paid enough uh, to, uh, to play on until you were 45, so to speak, and earn enough money to retire. So, I mean, you know, that handshake that I eventually had, which I don't, you know, they didn't show on television, uh, with Kerry Pack, it was a was a defining moment in my life. I mean, I just felt when I shook that man's hand that this was a deal that I could depend upon. Mm. However, having said that, we then moved on, and no one turned up. And uh, you know, the the uh, the press. I mean, the press got it so badly wrong; it's unbelievable. I mean, you know, I I can't believe that they went so totally pro-establishment mm. and didn't at least listen to us. I mean, that, uh, I've, I've had so many of them, including guys like Parkinson and others, apologize for getting it so wrong. So, yes, there were times when I was a bit worried, but I always thought right from day one that there would be a compromise. I mean, you know, I, I actually had the benefit a year before all this, knowing that Kerry wanted the television rights. That's what he was after. Uh, we were a vehicle to get those television rights, but once he got them, there was always going to be a, uh, a compromise. There was a scene uh, in the uh, in the uh, TV program that showed you being shunned, scorned, abused, etc. Uh, when you walked out to bat, uh, did that actually yeah. happen? And uh, what were you thinking at the time if it did? No, I, look, I spoke to Linton Taylor about that. I said, mate, you know, 
to refresh my memory, am I going mad? <laughs> I mean, Linton Taylor never came to Sussex at any stage. Uh, that, that scene didn't take place, so mm. there's no way in the world in any event that I'd be standing there talking to some bloke just prior to going into bat. Mm. Um, that, that was obviously a scene that they decided to put in there because it reflected a little bit of the tough time that I was having, and I was. I mean, I was under serious pressure mm. in England. And, I mean, I think, you know, that, that's the sort of licence they take. I mean, they, they needed to bring someone in to have a chat to me. Uh, they needed to get some gateman, um, you know, doubling the price of car parking and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and uh, there was a bit of bad language in that. But no, that didn't happen. Although I can see what they were trying to do. So how's Time treated your image in England and South Africa? We know how Time's treated your image here in Australia. I mean, you're a, in some ways a divisive commentator that some love, some don't. But that's like all of us. But you're kind of one of ours now, nonetheless. And I think you've endeared yourself to the wider community in Australia, because you are really one of ours. How have, how have they seen you now after time in England and South Africa? Well, I've just been back um, for, to make the big speech at the MCC, the, uh, the MCC Spirit of Cricket speech. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I, look, um, things have changed quite dramatically. I think most of the people out there, including the press and a lot of the members of the old state members of the MCC, uh, realise uh, with hindsight that World Series cricket had to happen. Um, you know, there was there's no doubt that we were being treated very badly. Uh, there's no doubt that the establishment, for what for some strange reason, didn't want to pass on some of the great things that were happening in cricket. I mean, you know, when you think back to those times, you know, the Lilies and Thompsons and Chapels, uh, and the Marshes and Walters, great cricketers in the West Indies. I mean. You know, we'd really, you know, set the place on fire. Um, the, the grounds were full. Everything was mm. right for them to, you know, move in our direction a little bit. Uh, for whatever reason, I think uh, probably a bit to do with the fact that uh, some of them who'd played themselves in years gone uh, were amateurs and uh, just didn't like to see uh, professionalism in the game. So, you know, I, I, I'll never understand it, however... I think that as a result of, uh, you know, the years passing, they've come to realise that they were all wrong. What about uh, the game itself, the WSC? Uh, some had better times than others. What are your memories of your performance in what was known as Packers Circus? But I found it so tough. I really did. I was so preoccupied with so many other things. Mm. I'd love to look at those stats and, uh, and be a little bit uh, more satisfied with the way... Mm. I performed personally on the grounds. I, I didn't perform very well at all. I had great players uh, playing around me, um, and you know, at the end of the day, we won the uh, the super tests. But uh, that that was more to do with some of the great players I, I was playing with than my personal performance. So, um, yeah, from that point of view, a little bit disappointing. But you know, that that basically pales into insignificance by comparison with the with the role I played and with uh, the friendship that I developed mm. with Kerry Packer, who, which was very special. Can you guarantee us that there won't be a memorabilia edition of How's That, uh, <laughs> Tony? <laughs> <laughs> but I can't guarantee that anymore. There was a time I, I was able to do that. But, but no, look, I, I mean, you know, I, look, there, there are aspects of the commercialisation of cricket that aren't everyone's cup of tea. I mean, at the time, you know, the, the, the big story was we don't want, co we don't want commercials in our yeah, cricket. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, I understand all that stuff, but I, I do think that uh, we've got other issues now. We've, we've almost got another World Series cricket on our hands we with have. 2020 cricket. Mm. Well, Greg, it's been great to have you on, and uh, we really appreciate you giving us some of your time. You, you're one of ours, as I said, and yep. you're a delight. Thank, thank you very much. That's a pleasure. Thank you. Tony Gregg joining us. Uh, won't uh, won't mention his average with the bat or how many wickets that he took, Jerry, because it's probably unkind given that he's just uh, been kind enough to give us so much of his time.